Why did I download this? So yeah, the ores are all mixed together. There's not much else to say about it, really. I'm gonna be playing on peaceful mode because I'm still recovering from last video, and I don't think that being annoyed by biters is a significant part of this challenge, but let's just get right into it. So I hit the play button and the game freezes, probably because it's trying to place ore everywhere, but eventually it starts, you can catch the first glimpse of this mess that I've gotten myself into. So yeah, as advertised, there is definitely ore everywhere. As you can see, our starting area is very small, but these ore patches only have around 50 ore in each tile, so depleting these resources is how we're gonna get more space. I put my first miner over two tiles containing only iron and coal. It's somewhat convenient because it'll automatically fuel the furnace on top of smelting the iron, but it's a little slow. Oh yeah, and why is this run hard? Because that happens. Apart from that, it's a completely normal Factorio run, and in completely normal Factorio runs, you usually need iron and copper to win, so I'm working on that. The spaces I can actually put up drills and get anything useful are pretty limited right now, since the furnaces would just clog up if we tried to feed multiple resources into it. I could collect it all in wooden chests and then hand sort all the ore, but the problem is, I don't want the other stuff, I just want iron. Unfortunately, it's going to become increasingly difficult to just get iron and nothing else. But I managed to get enough for our first boiler for some early research. At least if I had any materials. Three iron drills just isn't that much, especially when they're mining coal half the time. I'm pretty sure the speedruns have automated red science by now, but here I am still hovering over the same three mining drills. So I needed coal, and I wondered if pointing two drills at one another would make them only mine coal since it's the only valid output, but no, it gets locked up. This whole thing made me realize I have no idea how miners actually choose what tile to mine. After some observation, I'm pretty sure it chooses the tile randomly, but mines ten ores before choosing another. I don't know if this information will ever come in handy, cause it certainly won't here, but hey, knowledge unlocked. After staring at that for like two minutes, I've managed an incredible 90 iron plates, but they're already out of ore. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this run. At least we finally have some science going. Well, there's assembling machines, but there's not much for me to put into them. Still, I'm gonna need belts if I ever want to move past hand sorting ore, even if all the iron I've collected over the past 20 minutes can only make a hundred. What I want now are electric mining drills. They're twice as fast and mine in a 5x5 area instead of a 2x2, so I'll need to move them up less often and can start thinking about sorting the ore instead of just looking for a good patch, though most of the time it'll be a 2x4 since I need the space to put the belt without it blowing up. Also might as well make some quick automation of red science while I'm here. After a considerable amount of time, I've managed to make six miners. It's a start. So, basically, this is how the rest of the run is going to go. I put a bunch of random garbage onto a belt and then separate it with splitter filters. After like 40 minutes, I'm finally getting a furnace stack up. It's just one of those runs. Once I have this, I won't need to worry about finding a good place to put my miners anymore because anything I put on the belt will just be automatically sorted into the correct furnace. Now that I have that, plates will just magically appear. At least until the mining drills run out of ore, but they'll last longer than burners. You may have noticed that our starting area is rather circular, and that's not very convenient for our mining drills, so I'm gonna try and take down the curves first and hopefully end up with a straight area to put the miners on. And since I've got to get rid of stone, I might as well pave everything. After an hour, we're finally getting some circuits set up. Now I know I added that timer in the top left corner, but you shouldn't look at it as if it's actually indicative of how much time I've played, because half of the time it's just from me AFKing while Factorio runs in the background. Because of the small space and trickle of ores, there are several points in this run where there's pretty much nothing for me to do. Even with this trickle of plates, we're already getting clogged up with coal. 
Radars have the highest energy consumption of anything in the early game at 300 kilowatts, so I make a few with the sole intention to increase my energy load and thus my coal consumption. It helps, but not by much. So this is the fundamental problem with this challenge. It's impossible to get the stuff you want without getting all the stuff you don't want. At least stone I can turn into bricks and landfill, but coal and copper are going to be a problem. In the early game, you need like 8 or 10 times as much iron as you do copper, so we're always going to get backlogged on copper plates, and it's not like we can just delete it because this happens. Yeah, I'm only now getting red science automated. Almost two hours in, and we're about to get red and green up. Things are hard when you've only got like five plates a second coming in. You might have noticed a pattern here. I could be mining faster, but like I said, my main objective is to try and knock down these curves so I can stop with these wonky minor arrangements. But even if I covered as much as I could in drills, I'd still end up with like a yellow belt of iron at most, plus a ton of garbage I need to manually stash in chests. Then those drills will run dry after 30 minutes, and I'll need to move it back, run a new belt, and repeat this every time one runs out. I'm starting to have regrets about this challenge. My next main objective is to try and take down all of the ore covering this oil field so I can gain access to it by the time I reach chemical science, which will take about 8 hours at this pace. <sighs> I signed up for this. Clearly I just need more radars. And now I've got too many radars and it's eating all my coal. This might be the most bizarre thing I've ever built. It's a power switch that turns on a bunch of radars if the coal's past a certain level. One unit of coal is enough to power a radar for about 13 seconds, so this whole thing burns about an extra coal per second. After some effort and a lot of waiting, I've managed to uncover half of the oil field, so I might as well start pumping it now so I have plenty by the time I need it. I'm finally setting up steel. At 10 plates per second, it just never seemed a priority, but if I want chemical science, I'm gonna need it. This has basically been my life for the past three hours. Bots would make this easier, but not by much. These belts are a travesty. Keep in mind that every couple dozen minutes or so, I need to clear out all of the excess copper from the forges and stash it somewhere. I can't just AFK. Time for petroleum. At least I've got plenty of coal. Look out, after five hours we're in danger of actually making some progress here. I doubt my base can actually support this level of production, but whatever. At least with red circuits on the way, we'll be able to use up some of our excess coal and copper. Chemical science still takes more iron than it does copper, uh, 15 to 24 when you factor in the engine units, but still, it's a better ratio than anything else we've got so far. Now normally with one tiny oil patch like this, I'd be worrying about the petroleum keeping up with the base, but fortunately that won't be a problem here. And yes, I am being incredibly sarcastic. If it wasn't obvious, I hate this. Well, at least you've got chemical science. On to the robots. They'll make my life a lot easier, since they'll allow me to remotely replace miners one by one. The main advantage of these is that they'll allow me to completely deconstruct my entire base so I can rebuild it later, because this thing is a mess. But that'll only happen once I decide to start automating purple and yellow science, which at this rate will probably be in another 20 hours. I really hope no one's watching this for base building tips. I'm not proud of this. I'm ashamed. And there we go, construction robots. Also need roboports, which is probably gonna kill science for 30 minutes. But hey, after all that, we've finally got robots. If you're going to be automatically inserting robots into a roboport, it's always a good idea to limit it. Wow, look at that utility. Also, I can finally get rid of these random belts I left lying around because I was too lazy to deconstruct them. 
So after that, I basically just stand still for an hour and come back occasionally to stop the coal and copper from backing up. Yep. You know, that intro was way too energetic for this run. One thing that would make my life easier is coal liquefaction, because the radars just aren't enough anymore and I need something to dump all my excess coal into, so I make some janky purple science and after much waiting I've almost got enough. After some truly horrendous piping, it's just about ready to go. With a circuit condition to stop the standard oil refineries when we've got excess coal, this should take care of all of our overflows. Now I've just got to clear the copper every 10 minutes instead of the copper and the coal. You may have gathered by now that I'm not having very much fun. This isn't just boring, it's aggressively boring. At least if I was doing literally nothing, I could just close my eyes and imagine a rotating cow or something, but this... I can't even just let it run because I know it'll clog up with something eventually, and even if I dealt with all the clogging somehow, I'd still need to replace the miners every 20 minutes. The ore gains richness the further it is from the center, meaning that the middle runs out of ore much faster than the ends, so my two options are to either wait while 80% of my miners are out of ore to preserve the flatness, or end up reintroducing the curve to keep throughput up. It's a headache all around. If only there was some way to automatically remove the miners and rebuild them further up whenever they ran out. It sounds like a pipe dream, but then I remembered. I'm an engineer, and I've got the degree to prove it. There must be some way for me to solve this problem, and it turns out there is. There just so happens to be a mod called Recursive Blueprints that allows you to place blueprints automatically using circuits, and as long as we can do that, making something that deconstructs, moves up, and then reconstructs automatically suddenly doesn't sound so crazy. So I head over to the lab and see what I can come up with. Recursive Blueprints is a mod I've always known about, but this is the first time that it seemed like it could be more than just a novelty. After literally four hours of tinkering and a lot of failed experiments, I've finally come up with this design. This is just the first part. Basically, it runs a clock that's constantly counting up, but resets whenever an item passes by on the belt. Since the miner will constantly be outputting ore, if nothing passes by in a while, we'll know that the miners run out. That timer is sent along this power pole, which feeds into this. This is the actual computer part. It reads the clock, and if it exceeds a certain value, it activates another clock, which sends the signal to deconstruct, advance the location data in the memory cells by 4, and then reconstruct, and once it's done all that, finally reset. The memory cells are the two combinators there at the bottom, and they hold all the signals that we want to feed into the two blueprint deployers there in the middle. The problem is, right now they have no data in them, so we need to initialize them first, and that's done by this machine. It hooks into the memory cells, runs a clock, and flashes the initialization data into the cells from the two constant combinators at the bottom, the left being the construction data and the right being the deconstruction data. Once that's all loaded, it deconstructs itself and it's ready to go. As you can see, our data is held in the cells. There's multiple ways I could have approached this, namely a computer that marches with the miner itself instead of just extending, or a centralized computer that stores all location data, but those solutions would take more than four hours, so this is what I've got. Now we just need to build them. This is going to take a lot of combinators. Fortunately, I spent the last several hours building them up, as well as automating like one SPM worth of yellow and purple science, but over five hours, that's a lot of science. One drawback is that this takes a lot of space, but the best thing about having thousands of bots is I can just do this and put it back later. Next come the computers. Manually inserting blueprints into each one of these deployers would be a nightmare. Fortunately, we can just copy them from a chest containing a blueprint as long as we wire it up. Finally, we place the initializers. Yes, this is a lot of effort to set up, but it'll be worth it if it solves our problem. Here's the moment of truth. And bam, the blueprints copied properly. Now we just gotta turn on the rest of these and we're almost ready. 
If I make half roll onto the belt and the other half insert onto the belt, it should equally saturate it. Well, the miners work, but we won't know for certain until one of them runs out of ore. It works. I never doubted it, obviously. Why not watch it work? With that taken care of, I can start making a base that could conceivably build a rocket, mostly safe in the knowledge that its ore won't run out every 20 minutes. Obviously it's only one side right now, but it's better than nothing. The way it looks on the map kind of reminds me of a stick of ram. I set some miners up on the western front too, since it's the only place that I've still got space. It seems to work, but when it first runs out of ore, it's obviously broken. After watching it in action, I realize that the deconstructor isn't working properly, and then I remember, oh yeah, it's still set for a 3x8 when this is an 8x3 since I rotated it. Unfortunately, that means I'm gonna need to reflash the memory cells with new data. That's not the end of the world, and eventually I get it going again. And then it does this. Then I realized I forgot to add the rotate signal into the blueprint deployer, so I flash that into memory, and it breaks again. This time because I forgot that the computer is subtracting 4 from the Y value to make it march north, instead of X to make it march west. After I fix that, finally it starts working properly. Ah, the joys of debugging. I'd love to fully automate the south and the east, but I don't think I have enough space for that and the base. So since we're going to be expecting more than one yellow belt of throughput now, we need to make it so that all the lanes get filtered simultaneously to avoid clogs on the belts. Did you ever wonder exactly how much ore was passing by on these mixed belts? Well, so was I. So I built this circuit. It reads whatever passes the belts, puts it into a memory cell, then pushes that memory into a shift register every 30 seconds before resetting. After that, the shift register holds onto that data and shifts it down into the next register every cycle until it gets a rolling account of the last four readings from the memory cell, which is finally divided by four, to the display which shows the throughput every second with reasonable accuracy. You know, simple stuff. A shift register is basically just a D flip-flop that outputs into another D flip-flop, but here they're a little weird since to keep them compact we need to effectively make the clock and reset signals share a wire, meaning we need to initialize it with a value of 1 before the clock will work. If you don't know what a D flip-flop is, well, it's a logic circuit that takes input and holds that input even when the original signal disappears. What's a flip-flop? Well, it's a latch controlled by the clock. What's a latch? It's a bistable multivibrator. What's a bistable multivibrator? It's a circuit that has two stable states and can be switched between them by an external pulse. What does that have to do with anything? Not much, but the end result is this. The mods for this are Santa's Nixie tubes and text plates. As you can see, we don't get them all in the same ratio. Stone comes in at a fraction of the other three, while coal and copper are reasonably similar, and with iron being the most abundant. The actual numbers change, but this ratio is pretty consistent. We get roughly 70% as much copper as we do iron, and that's a problem. The ratio is actually pretty accurate for the five major sciences, but if we want to automate space science, suddenly we need more copper than iron. But we'll worry about that later. The miners sure have gotten far. Think of all the work I didn't need to do. Probably still hasn't made up for the four hours it took to design, though. Alright, so this base sucks, so let's just get rid of it. Now we can replace it with something better. I'm gonna build this base to support 30 SPM infinite, but am I going to have enough resources to support that? <sighs> Probably not. My iron throughput peaked at like 40, and I need 80 to even get close. I'm still using steel furnaces because my power is horrible. All I have are steam boilers fed by coal. I'd hope to reach some uranium by now, but even though I've been mining non-stop for 20 hours, it's still far to the left. And since there's no room for solar, this is all I've got. 
Not only are electric furnaces twice as big as steel furnaces, they also consume twice as much energy, so this is really my only option here. There's not much for me to say here, so here's a building montage. That only took four hours. We've got everything we need for the rocket now. Except rocket control units, but they're easy enough. I'm surprised I managed to fit so much in this little space. Obviously I could get more if I moved up the auto miners, but I don't want to flash the memory again. The only thing I'm missing is concrete, so I set up this jank assembler and let it run. And never launch a rocket without Productivity 3s, especially when we're as starved for resources as we are here. And there it is, our rocket silo. These beacons are useless. I just felt like putting them here so I could say I used them. The base sucks, so it's gonna take a while. Unsurprisingly, we're low on copper, but at least we finally get to use the 20 chests of copper that we've been building up since the start. I thought I was going to automate space science, even if it is only at 15 SPM, but then I changed my mind. I just want to escape this run.
So there it is, the victory. 27 hours and 20 minutes. So that's it. If it weren't for the knowledge that my suffering might bring joy to someone else, I wouldn't have made it this far. The biggest problem is I didn't listen to the mod page when it said it highly recommended this other mod called Peppermint Mining which lets you use bots to mine. I looked at it and, fool that I was, thought it looked overpowered and defeated the challenge. If I had it, I could have actually tried carving a path to the uranium. <sighs> Designing the auto miners was the closest thing to entertainment that I experienced this run. I really wanted to fully automate space science and reach that 30 SPM that I designed the base for, but I just couldn't bring myself to play any more of that run. If I could have gotten access to some uranium and gotten rid of my power problems, I could have shoved productivity modules into everything and made do with a slow throughput, but alas. Since I'd be getting way too much iron in that case, I'd need to smelt all the excess with the sole intention of blowing it up by turning it into belts or something and using the recursive blueprints to place it on ore. I know what I need to do, I just don't want to do it. <sighs> oh well, I've demonstrated proof of concept and that's good enough for me. So, would I recommend this mod? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.